How's it going out there with you? I just was on your page. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, nah, everything's, uh, everything's going good. Uh, everything's going good. Uh, still, still out here trucking, but I, I see you still out here doing the damn thing, uh, but you came across some issues, so I guess that was the reason why I decided to get a, give you a call and uh, and chop it up with you on that. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, um, it's something else I hear, you know, once we um, go to another level in this field. Because, you know, um, before I started trucking, I was a um, broker, a freight broker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were going to build, like, fleets. But um, I started out with Volvo trucks. And I did, well, no, no, let's go back. I started out actually with the Kenworth. And I didn't like the way, you know, um, you know the service was with the Kenworth. So uh, I partnered up with some gentlemen, one out of um, um Miami and another one out of, um, huh, I forgot, up near um, Buffalo, New York. Uh, but anywho, and uh, we had uh, gotten some uh, Volvos. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't that they, they didn't have the presence or the care for us. It was just like the Volvo dealerships, they were always oh. overwhelmed. What I was going to do, uh, what I was going to ask you you know we was gonna go back because we 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 kind of we we kind of linked up with each other what why fuck? several years ago <laughs> yeah several years ago man i mean was you back back then was you still a broker back then when when we came across each other yes i was just leaving the brokerage um, side of it and getting into the trucking but actually I had been into trucking and I was going back and forth between being an independent um, you know uh, freight broker uh, whereas we did what you call third party logistics I was running both uh, FedEx I was running um, Publix I had accounts with um, I had several different major accounts and then I had people offering me other accounts but I just wasn't big enough so what we were trying to do originally when I was uh, hooking up with the guy from uh, uh, up there in New York in Miami mm -hmm. we were going to try and another girl over in uh, Georgia we were going to try to build an umbrella you know um, so we could get certain accounts and um, you know because you some some customers they want you to have a certain number of trucks mm -hmm. and by I'm the only one that had been in business for so long. I had actually started out like in 2012 and, um, and a lot of people didn't have that experience under their belt and they could, they couldn't get freight, but I could get freight. But, what, but you, you, you was just doing but at, at one point, 21. oops, at one point you, you was doing FedEx. Yeah. At one point, but see, when I was doing FedEx, I was a broker as well. I just didn't, really operate um as a broker at first at mm -hmm. first keep that in mind at first i didn't operate as a broker and then i switched it up and purchased some more insurance and started doing what you call third-party logistics that's when i was doing uh fedex i had Publix. um i had all kinds of different little accounts um you know to keep me moving say if i went to florida i still could get out because I had access to other, you know, uh, customers and accounts and stuff. Okay. And then when I usually got back up toward Georgia, um, I would go and start back doing my FedEx. Or if I got somewhere that FedEx didn't have freight, I would, you know, uh, get, I would get other freight. Like, say, for instance, sometimes I could be somewhere in California mm -hmm. and FedEx may not have anything for me or they needed me to deadhead, shoot, three, four hundred miles. But see. I could get freight from around the corner from where I was because I was connected with some, so many other brokers. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's why I had started doing the third party logistics. And I actually taught a couple other people about that because the last, uh, business partner I was working with over at FedEx, he actually left FedEx and this is what he's doing now. He's actually doing the third party logistics, whereas he's getting his own freight, but, 
you know, when he gets in dry spots, I got him connected with Snyder as well. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't understand Snyder. Snyder is becoming more like a FedEx, but better. Mm -hmm. Um, Snyder is uh, more, they have company drivers, but the majority of people now are going into becoming uh, independent contractors and own operators. Right, through Snyder. Through Snyder. But see, with Snyder, you don't just have to run Snyder Freight. And say, for instance, if you over at FedEx, you can run Snyder Freight. And that's what I got, say, um, my friend AJ. I got him into, like, when he kind of, like, left FedEx and started doing uh, C.H. Robinson. Then I said, well, you probably should sign up with Snyder, too, you know, because you can do power only, like how people do J.B. Hunt, mm -hmm. power only. You can do power only and pull a Snyder trailer. You don't have to be with Snyder. Mm -hmm. You know, you can sign up with them and get qualified. And so say if you don't have freight wherever Snyder is saying you go pick up a trailer and you go pick up that trailer and, you know, deliver a load. And you can do also a load out in that trailer like that trailer. They may need you to say take that trailer 300 miles from where you did that last drop when you picked up that empty. Mm -hmm. And then you can find another load to the next destination and still get paid. It's called like a, a loadout. Okay, okay, that's what's mm -hmm. up. That's what's up. So that's so that was that was back then. That uh, was back then. But in the midst of all, in, in the midst of the, in the midst of all that, in the midst of the years, you went and brought a truck. Yes. So do you, was that was that straight cash out your pocket, or you went the lease route, or did you go and and and? Uh, and I went the lease it? purchase uh, route because I had to put eight thousand dollars down, and it's for years. And but see, the goal was again, we were supposed to just get trucks and work up on the you know an umbrella. Mm -hmm. Say for instance, um, the Publix account. Even though I got certain loads to have that account we needed at least 13 trucks and you know i think after going through so many bad experiences with service at the dealerships mm -hmm. i kind of it kind of took something out of me that i'm pretty much after i you know get this lease behind me lease purchase behind me i'm probably just gonna go back into the freight brokerage side and um because you know, it's, it's, you just, you've been out here. It's yeah. amazing that they, you know, when I say they, you know, who I mean, mm -hmm. they don't want to see us with anything. Exactly. It has gotten so worse since the pandemic. I mean, I literally took my truck in a brand new truck. When I picked up my truck out of Wisconsin, that truck only had 12 miles on it. Well, before work, be, before we talk about before we talk about the issues with the truck, because you okay. you know you 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 went through you you picked it up in Wisconsin and then you mm -hmm. took it in two you took it at two places until you actually got to the one place that actually did something for you on the truck. Right, but, but the other place was going to, but I was you know running. I I stopped in between while I was on the load. I couldn't actually leave the truck because. You know, when you're under active load, you just can't put the truck in the shop unless it breaks down. Exactly. So before we talk about, so we, before we talk about the uh, the two places that uh, mm -hmm. that that you that you uh, stopped at, let's talk about. Let, let's go back up to when you actually uh, decided to uh, buy the truck. Did you? Did you? Uh, did uh, Did you get? Well, you say you did brokerage. So did you mm -hmm. have your did you have your own authority around? I that? do have my own authority, but it's it's not active right now because Snyder has so much work. Oh my God. Snyder has so much work. That's why I keep saying Snyder is on the level with the FedEx, like how we were doing FedEx um custom critical and we were on the elite team, me and AJ mm -hmm. and uh the Quan, we were all on the elite team. That's the highest you can go with any FedEx division. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got over to Snyder and they got, and, and they have this, um, this, what you call it, an all in one uh, load board, mm -hmm. and you pick your own freight. And, um, you know, they have loads on there like FedEx. Some loads 3000 some could be upwards of almost $5,000. Mm -hmm. 
you know, FedEx does go higher with some of the real, real, um, like DOD, uh, air freight, some of that type of uh, stuff that we were running. Um, we could get loads like this is how AJ and the Quan and I met. Um, I had a load that was twenty three thousand dollars plus per diem during the day. They were paying us like $150 per diem um, to pick up a load from Tampa, Florida. This is where I met them at, down in Tampa. And um, me and another guy, he was a Marine that was driving with me. And we had a um, week out in Las Vegas with all expense pay, all expense pay. I mean, it was nice. Mm. And uh, but that load from... Um, Tampa to Las Vegas because uh, they had a show or something out there and all we had to do well first of all all of us had to drop our FedEx trailers and we had to pick up like um, these low profile to Las Vegas it was probably like three or four of us and uh, I'm talking about trucks and um, that was a pretty good little hit right there you know because okay. some people don't even make 23000 in a month and we actually got that in a week I'm talking about each one of our trucks. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Congratulations on that. But now you now now you 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 brought your truck. Um, yes. What what made you decide to buy your to buy your truck? Well, um, again, it was we were all supposed to come together. See, look at this. Check this out. <laughs> we were all supposed to come together. They're not going to sell you three trucks at a time. Okay. So if it's three or four of us and we need a, we got this major count and they telling us we need anywhere from 12 to 15 trucks, think about this. I can get three trucks right now at Snyder, okay, mm -hmm. and I can put them all anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with AJ, same thing. Well, AJ actually has four trucks, and the Quan I think, got three or four. I'm the only one that kind of pulled back because, like I said, my very first and I'm keep referencing backwards. My first uh, week and a half or two out, I ran into issues with service, mm -hmm. you know, with the um, freight liner. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe what I was actually going through, you know, just, you know, for something that I didn't do to the truck. Um, what, you know, I wrote in my thing today, you know, um, you know how they transport the trucks? They have to put um, certain safety measures to keep, say, the windows and things from breaking mm -hmm. and this and that. And I think that's what happened, that they left some of that stuff in my driver's side window. And my window got stuck, and I couldn't, you know, roll it up, couldn't roll it down. Okay. So I took the truck to the Freightliner dealership. Now, this and is they the, treated this, – this is the this, – this is... The one in Wisconsin where you got it from or the one in, in Alabama? In Birmingham. It's the one in Alabama because in Wisconsin, I didn't have any issue because I never rolled the window down because, see, I had to work my way back down south. Mm -hmm. And I went to Car Carlisle, PA, and to uh, Georgia, and then I worked my way back around to Birmingham to pick up my stuff because – I'm from Birmingham. I was, you know, getting my bedding. You know, when you get another a new truck, you have to kind of work your way back home if you don't have your stuff that you keep on the truck with you, you know, with you. Now, when so you, anywho, when, go ahead. when you got your truck from Wisconsin, that's that's when you just went on ahead and started getting the load to get back down to uh, yes. Birmingham. Oh, okay, so you, so you, how how did you now you? Now you running Snyder Freight, so all you had to do was just jump on the load board and right dispatcher. I'm my own dispatcher. Right. Um, I can run Snyder. I can call FedEx and run FedEx. I can run JB Hunt, not JB Hunt. I'm sorry, CH Robinson. I can run um, Echo Logistics. I can run whatever I want to run, okay. you know. But it just so happens Snyder's been so good as far as the load board. I haven't felt a need to run any other freight. I love Snyder um, low board, as a matter of fact. I mean, I'm literally in love with it. Um, and, you know, on average, you know, I can make, you know, being a solo driver, on average, I've been pretty much making anywhere from about $4,500 to $5,000 a week. Wow. That's, so that's not bad that's for, not bad you know. All. all right. So, right. 
So picking up, so picking up a load, uh, you started noticing some intricacies with your truck. You know, being with that, you could raise up and down the window. Your first right. stop, your first stop was the FedEx. I mean, I'm sorry, FedEx, the Freightliner in Alabama. How was your service with them? That's what I'm down? saying. That's where the, the the downfall came in because my first stop actually was in. Uh, Carlisle, PA. I oh. took a load out of Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and I dropped it off in Carlisle, PA. I took another load out of Carlisle, PA, and brought it down to Atlanta, Georgia. From Atlanta, Georgia, I worked my way over to Birmingham. Okay. You know, and but, um, but when did you find ahead. out? When when did you find out that you know your window was acting up? Well, when I was in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, that's when I found out the window. Well, McDonald, Georgia, actually. Uh, it's a customer I went to. I had to roll my window down, and I was backing, and I couldn't get the window back up. I was like, what in the world? And so I noticed this sticky stuff coming up on the window, some type of material. I took, I got pictures of it. I took, you know, pictures of it and everything. And my logic was because I'm up here in Atlanta or near Atlanta, I went back over to the um, Snyder uh, Operations Center, and um you know, they told me because the truck was brand new and under warranty that it was a freight liner issue. Mm-hmm. So I go from Georgia directly to Birmingham freight liner. Okay. And um, that's where the issue began because you hear me talking about the bad service I got, but I also had a pair of $800 coach glasses stolen out that truck while my Whoa. truck was. When, yeah. when it was in service? Yes, when it was in service. That was in Al- Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That was in Alabama. That was in Alabama. Everything, all the, everything bad that has happened to this truck came out of Alabama. From wow. um, they they charged me four hundred dollars for them to you know um, fix the window. Mm-hmm. They broke the lock. You, I don't know if you heard me say they broke my lock in my driver's side door. Mm -hmm. What happened was I had called an Uber to go to the airport to pick my Mercedes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got back with the Mercedes, I came back to the truck to get my luggage out. And so I had an extra key. I have two keys to the truck. I gave them one and I, I had one. So once I got my stuff, I'm trying to lock the door back and they had broke the lock in the door. And I said, well, why can't I lock my door? And the guy said, you know, he didn't even check the door when he had took the window out, you know, took the window apart that he didn't make sure that the door would lock that. But they had broke my lock and I told him he had to fix that. And he did. But anywho, once I did finally leave there, they they charged me four hundred dollars for everything that should have been under warranty. Now, I'm telling you, I only had the truck a week, you know, by the time I made the Birmingham, maybe a week in a few days because they- I picked the truck truck up july the 27th and they and and they and they already went in your pocket on something, yes. on something that was supposed to be that's that was supposed to be under warranty did you question that when 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 they well did see that? let what? me show you something mm-hmm. how i got the truck and how i have my mercedes i'm also a paralegal and i'm also a law student mm-hmm. so i'm just out here driving so what i you know, I kind of hinted at it in my post today that I wanted to wait until I pick my truck up from McDonald, Georgia tomorrow because they called me and told me my truck is ready at the freight line in McDonald. Now I this, wanted to, you know, this is this is in McDonald, Georgia, right? Well, now I, I wouldn't take it back to the one in Birmingham cause because remember, of the bad service, because of the bad service. Because, see, I mentioned to you about the driver's side door mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they broke the lock. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you know, a pair of coach glasses was stolen. But see, about a couple of days later, when I got back out over the road, I couldn't put like sodas or anything in the uh, freezer or, yeah, your you know, put any kind of. Your refrigerator was acting up. My refrigerator was acting up. The door wouldn't stay closed. Um, and then I couldn't get the freezer part open. It's a brand new refrigerator. I couldn't get the doors to open in the, the freezer. And so. That's when I um, went down by the freight line in Tuscaloosa. The gentleman there, they were real nice in Tuscaloosa. He told me, he said, look, you're going to have to leave this truck because I can't get this door open either. 
So I realized it wasn't me being crazy because I'm like, okay, maybe I don't know how to open the door. But once I took it to the freight line in Tuscaloosa and that man said he couldn't get the door open, I said, you know, see, I knew something was wrong, you know, after that truck came from the Birmingham freight line. But I couldn't leave the truck because I was under a load. I was coming up out of, um, I think I was coming up out of Vance, Alabama. And I had went swung around to the Tuscaloosa, but I had a, I was on the load that I was taking to South Carolina. But anywho, I couldn't leave the truck. So I think it was in October. I go back by the freight line in McDonald, Georgia. Same thing. He couldn't get the door open. We sat out there for three hours thinking that the door maybe was um, stuck because some ice or something had gotten in the way. And we left the refrigerator open for three hours, and he still couldn't get the door open. And so he wanted me to leave the truck. And I said, no, I can't leave the truck. I'm I'm really, really busy. And, you know, my truck payment, you know, I've got a pretty high truck payment every week. And so I got to run. So I couldn't leave the truck then at the uh, freight line in McDonald. But, again, he's the second technician that worked with Peachtree Freight Line, different dealerships. He couldn't get the door open. Wow. So you, you didn't stop and ask me. What do I think happened? Reason why they can't get the door open? Well, this and this is coming out of Tuscaloosa, right? So why? no, this is coming. Well, why, no, I took why? the truck to Tuscaloosa after I took the truck. You know, got the truck back from the Birmingham freight liner. All right. So what 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 do you think happened? I think they put industrial, uh, some type of industrial uh, uh, glue or adhesive in my freezer door and you know it just lo it it glued and this is glued. The, and this is the tuscaloosa freight no liner. this is birmingham the oh, rednecks oh okay so this is the birmingham freight liner that you think that sabotaged your truck yes i think they sabotaged it. my truck yeah. and at that point you know realizing that i they broke my lock in my door yes he, they did repair it back mm -hmm. they charged me for um getting the window to roll back up exactly that um, was supposed to be up under warranty that should have been under warranty because i only had the truck a week but i got the receipt and, now you asked your, me that i and your glasses came up in my glasses so in my glasses so uh so did you especially for your glasses you already got your you already questioned your lock and you was able to get your lock fits but did yes. you but did you question the 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 freezer and your glasses being missing with them? Well, I had initially did a uh, uh, a Google review and I took it down because the guy came back out and gave me a card and told me if I needed anything. Because not only that, hold on, I, I left out a couple things. My headlight had a scratch across it. Now I'm talking about a brand new truck. I ain't had no kind of incidents in. I my headlight had a scratch and I had like a stretch like on my paintwork and I tried to tell the guy I said you know this right here shouldn't be on my truck because I just got this truck and when I brought it in I didn't have a stretch on my head like he told me to bring the truck back in and you know he would send it to the body shop to get the stretch off my headlight and off my the you know, like near my hood but after all this other stuff in the refrigerator I said you know what They'd be done done something to my engine. I'm not taking my truck back over there. He offered to, you know, do the body work, the, the, you know, to get the stretch mark off my headlight and off my paint. But, um, but did you, but did you question about your glasses being missing? No, because I have insurance on those glasses. But, and the, and the other sad part about it, they only got one black person working there. And guess what? She's a female. She was the one that wrote the ticket up. She was the one to go in the truck. And I don't think she had been there long. And personally, I think she probably stole my glasses. Mm. I don't think it was the rednecks. I think it was the black girl that stole my glasses. All right. And like I said, again, you you, you just didn't bother to mention it because you, you got uh, your homeowner's insurance connected onto your stuff that's on the truck with you, right? Yeah, yes, I had insurance on those. I I go to the most expensive eyeglass place, Lens Crafter, and anytime I purchase a pair of glasses or shades, I, I purchase insurance. And um, so that's the come I didn't mention that. But then, too, 
I don't want to seem like that a person that's accusing people of everything. That's why I told you when I pick up my truck tomorrow, I'll go back and do my Google review again because I had took it down. And everything that I'm mentioning to you, I'm going to put in the um, Google review because you do know we have two years to file a complaint against any business, whether it's trucking or any business. So now the your your truck is over at Madonna, Georgia, right? Yes. Okay. So you was able to you, you was able to leave it there because you, you took you was able to take some time off. But when you yes. go but when you go pick up your, your truck tomorrow, you gonna get right back at it? You know, give because you've been off for like what, two, three days so far? No, I've been off seven days as of today. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you gotta get back at it. <laughs> I gotta get back at it. And not only that, I gotta find a way of making up what I lost. Um you know, uh this I don't know if you know or you're aware. This is this, you know, like AJ got so many trucks and he's having a hard time finding drivers. Uh, and the Quan, he, you know, also has so many trucks. And then in the process of the Quan trying to be out here with us, his brother was murdered. And he pulled himself off the road, and he's taking care of his brother's son. So it's it's like we got a shortage of partnerships and people that we're networking with because things changed since we first had our, you know, first made business plans. Things have changed, and um, I I was going to team back up with my ex-business uh, partner, AJ, but he just got married, and you know how that is when you just got married, yeah. and I don't know his wife, and you know. And she don't know you either, so. Right, and when that, we that were out here. Been, that, that wouldn't have been a good mix. It's not going to be a good mix, but. I'm trying to tell you the only way most people, and you can ask some other people if you think I'm wrong or off the mark about this, the only way that you're going to make the twelve and fifteen and twenty thousand dollars a week is has to be another person on the truck. The truck has to, you know, you have to tag team one person get from behind the steering wheel, another one. Because I've done it before I met AJ. And Daquan, I had a, a white girl out of Dallas I used to run with. And me and her was both astonished at the kind of money we were making. Um, that's, you know, if a person doesn't have any goals, like I've been interviewing people. And a lot of the people I interview, they don't have goals. Like this one guy, I took him out to Denny's over in uh, Jackson, Georgia, over at Alpha, once uh, I-75. Mm -hmm. I actually saw the guy in the... Um, driver's lounge and he was just sitting in there and he started a conversation with me i said you know i'm looking for a driver for my truck and um he said you know he was looking for another job i said well you know what let me go put my bags back in my truck and i'm gonna come in here and me and you're gonna have breakfast so we went in there to denny's to sit down and i got to interviewing the guy and he's gonna tell me what i should be doing and what i shouldn't be doing and who i should be looking for what i shouldn't be looking for and i said you know what he's not gonna work out <laughs> and i right because i i let me i want to tell you one little short story to kind of make you understand why i was telling him certain things a lady friend of mine named sheree her son was dry, driving, so just got his uh, CEO, I think maybe about a year ago, he was driving for this other company. He had put a pit bull on the truck with him. Had a, he had a brand new truck, but he was driving company. He put a pit bull on that truck, but he had rolled that truck over, you know, and they fired him. But when the people got the truck back, you know, one of the other reasons wasn't because of the rollover, it was because that pit bull had tore that truck up on the inside. I mean, it, it was damaged. The truck was damaged on the inside. So I always tell people, I don't want no pants on the trucks. You know, any truck that I have, I don't want a pant. And to AJ and I had the hardest time in one of the trucks we were driving, neither of, of us smoked. He had purchased a truck um, from the place up there in Nakarada, Volvo in um, Tennessee, and uh, we could never get the smoke smell. We put coffee cans up under the um, 
the bunkers, you know, because they say coffee um, will get the smell of cigarette smoke out. We couldn't get the smell out. That's, that smell stayed in that truck. Um, we bought out, like I said, we bought everything that they tell you to buy. We couldn't get the smell out. So the second thing is I tell people you can't smoke in any of my trucks, okay? And so the guy was just trying to tell me, well, you shouldn't be telling people they can't smoke and you shouldn't tell people they can't have a dog. I was like, he's not going to work out. How, uh, yeah, yeah, yo, that's, it, it's, your, it's your truck. Right. So if you and, don't want no dolls or you don't want no dolls or you don't want nobody smoking in that bad boy, then they gotta respect that. If they can't Exactly if they can't respect that then bruh, you yeah, then yeah, yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna work. <laughs> he wasn't gonna work and then I'm I don't know you probably never met me in person, but I'm very professional. I'm very, very professional. When you see me most people, even when I go to shippers and back up to the dock, I go in and looking for, you know, the shipping clerk, this and the day, walk right past me. They think I'm going in the office to work. I'm a temp or somebody. <laughs> but I be, you know, I'm a truck driver. And, um, you know, the guy started flirting with me at the breakfast table. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm I'm trying to be very professional with you, but you, you, you just... You 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 making it difficult. So. You're making it difficult, and so he gave me his phone number. I never did call him back. It's another. And then after that, I met another girl that had been from so many trucking companies. But I kept telling her, I said, "Well, it doesn't matter whether I put you in the truck mm -hmm. with Snyder, FedEx, uh, C H Robinson, whoever. They're gonna want you to do a background check." You're not just working for me. I don't care if I am running as an owner operator or third party logistics. I got carriers that I pull for and they need to know who my driver is. You know, what your driving record is like. Right. You know, what have you been involved in any kind of theft or freight or anything? They need to know who you are. She didn't want to run a she didn't want a background check ran on her. Uh then that's the, if if she didn't want a background check ran on her, then that's the, that's a red flag right there. That would have told you, like, okay, no, I can't mess with you, cause you trying it, it did. because you're hiding something. What What are you? Yeah, hiding? it's something she's hiding. What are you hiding? You know. So, all right, well, Jacqueline, that's what's up, man. Well, it's good to catch up with you, uh, owner operator, brokerage. I mean, you just uh, you just doing it all out here, uh. And I, 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 I am happy that I actually got you, you know, got you on and uh, and uh, talk with you at, at length on what's, what's going on with you. Um, tomorrow you'll find out, you know, if everything is taken care of with your truck, and I hope everything is. Uh, definitely reach back out to me and let me know how let me know how it go. I sure will, but I honestly think. Um just you know so other own operators and other people know mm -hmm. you can get a feel for when you go into service what kind of treatment how they're going to treat your your equipment i know this for a fact um i know the people over at the mcdonald uh, freightliner by name rebecca and steve those are the two they like taking care of me you know how if you taking your personal vehicle in, like if I take my Mercedes in, I get to, the people just take care of me. Right. You 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 feel like they care about you. That's McDonald, Georgia. That's Tuscaloosa, but Birmingham, my own hometown. Birmingham, Alabama is my own hometown. These people treat you like you ain't nothing. Yeah. And I don't recommend, I'm going to go, like I said, tomorrow to do a Google uh, review. And try to, you know, warn people before they bring their truck up to the Birmingham Freightliner. Don't go there. Find somewhere else to take your um, vehicle. And I'm going to tell you why. All money is green. It don't matter whether you're Puerto Rican, black, white, Asian. You should treat all customers the same. Do you, and if you do, you think, do you think they treat you that way because you're a woman? Not only because I'm a woman. I think it's because I'm a woman of color. Um, I'm very business professional. Um, again, you haven't met me in person. I've been told that I have a certain way that I walk. Mm -hmm. You know, I walk with pride because um, I'm proud of myself considering my daddy 
that when he got into business, uh, he used to work in the cotton fields, didn't get a chance to get an education. But not only am I an educated black woman, you know, I'm working in a male predominantly industry. And so I'm proud of what I do and I'm proud of how far I have taken this business. And a lot of the them, you know, they don't want to see a woman first, because I probably could be a white woman, I'd be treated the same way. But it's like it's more profound being that I understand racism, you know, and I understand, you know, I don't really understand hate, but I know what it is. Gotcha. All right. All right. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, again, I I definitely enjoy the conversation as I always do because, you know, the best conversation starts over here. But uh, but uh, Jacqueline, thank you very much. I know you're a very busy uh, professional uh, lady truck driver. Keep it up. And uh, I would definitely uh, definitely wait, uh, definitely be interested in the next uh, conversation that we have. All right. Well, thank you. You have a blessed evening. But you wanna be bad, you're